Oh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> my bad, y'all. Please forgive me. Of course, no problem. How are you? Oh, how you doing, Lucy? <laughs> <That's> crazy. <laughs> Kekula. Uh, oh, good to meet you. Good to meet you guys. This is so awesome. Hold up, real quick. How you doing? What we doing? What we doing? <laughs> we chat, girl. We're about to talk. Let's do it. I'm talking to Kehlani and Saya, and they were like, how can we do a three-way FaceTime? And we're like, we can't do that. But now I know what we can do. We can just get on Yeah. <laughs> yes, we can. We can. So I wanted to just, like, start out by thanking you guys for coming to the meetup with Lucina. And this is our second month, so we're still, like, figuring it out. But um, I'm just happy to have you guys, and I really admire your music, and I feel like we have a lot to talk about, so I just want to jump into it. So um, I guess maybe you can, you guys can introduce yourselves and kind of tell the people who are watching more about what you do and, you know, in a couple of sentences, you know. Whoever wants to go first. I'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my name is Kay Kola, and I'm an artist and a Grammy-nominated songwriter. Um, I'm also a Lisa Dreamer, a Hope Dealer, an Indigo Child, um, <laughs> all of that. So I'm from California, born and raised in LA, and um, I've been uh, singing since I can make noises. I've been writing since I was nine. So yeah. That's me and that's uh, all right. I'm just doing something. All right. My name is Gwen. Gwen Bond. I'm from Decatur, Georgia. I uh, I'm a singer, songwriter, producer, artist, whatever. And um, yeah, I am. Um, I'm really like a self-taught type of thing. Like I started doing this like when I was six, hearing like stuff, but I didn't really get into it like piano until I was 12 and then I started like going hard at 17 <laughs> so this is new like you know what I'm saying yeah and it's like I've only been here for a couple of years so you know I'm a baby dope awesome awesome so explain I guess if you could like okay I'm gonna ask you first I, Explain what happens when you go to create a song. Do you start with lyrics? Do you start with the beat? Do you, like, how's your process? Um, I'm really emo, so, <laughs> like, I have to be in a vibe um, when I'm writing. And um, it, can, it can happen anyway. Like, sometimes I'll just... Like, I could be in the shower, and I'll get, like, a lyric, and then, and then I'll add a melody to it, and then I'll have, you know, I'll either grab my guitar, or I'll have somebody um, play the beat around that, or um, sometimes you can the vibe of, you know, a record, a producer's playing, um, I just, I just catch a vibe from that record, and I may already have some, so I write a lot of poetry, so I may already have some, you know, words in my phone, I keep it in my iPhone, <laughs> and uh, I'll just, I'll just start from there. I mean, there's, there's just so many things inspire, that inspire me, like, I could be driving, I like to drive to the Bay a lot, and driving up that five, like, I could just see something and, you know, get inspired that way, too, but um, love is definitely a mute for me, so um, I tend to fall in and out of love a lot <laughs> to get my inspiration. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I feel like we kind of all have that same, like, emotional response to whatever, and we go and we make stuff based on that. But Gwen, like, how do you, so when, because Gwen, I got a few questions for you, girlfriend. Hey. <laughs> because your beat, like, um, specifically, well, tell me your process first, and then I'm going to ask you about a song you did with Schoolboy Q. All right. Okay. So first, I forgot to say, uh, thank you so much. I'm a fan of you. 
This is crazy. <laughs> you don't understand. This is crazy. Like you know what I'm saying. You are. You're an OG. You know what I'm saying. Respect. Respect. That's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it, and I'm just happy to like still be in some sort of loop, you know, and to just be able to talk to artists like yourselves and just have a conversation about this, you know. So thank you all for coming to join me. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> so the creative process for me is definitely off of life moments, uh, conversation. I like to pull from anything. I might be looking at a commercial and hear something in the music in the you know what I'm saying? Like I might hear something outside, you know what I'm saying? Like, it'll start from anything from from the li like I might not start with the lyrics. I might start with the beat. Or I might not start with the beat. I'll start with the lyrics. You know what I'm saying? So it can go any kind of way. It just depends on how it starts. What, what's the first? What's the spark? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So recently, like, the maybe the last thing you made, how did it go? Like, what did you start with? What did you do? Um... I, uh, I chopped up some drums. I just flipped some little drums real quick. That was the first thing, and uh, it just took off from there. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> so, so the song you did with Schoolboy Q, of course, that's like, you know, a lot of people talking about you, and a lot of people put on to you from that song. So how did that come about, and what was your process? Did you already have the beat made? Did you? Yeah, yeah. How did it go? So I was literally at home, like, in, in Decatur. Here, I was here in this room, you know? <laughs> um, and I was just, like, kind of just still going through things and just figuring out what needed to happen, what I needed to do in life and gym. You know what I'm saying? Just, you know, living life. And mom, you know, still that struggling artist, literally, you know, you got to you got to grind that thing out, you know. <laughs> so I like the cream, and mom is like, you need to get a job. You need to get a job. Literally, it's that. You know what I'm saying? And um, I had gotten a call from the group, the production group, THC. You know about them? Mm -hmm. Crazy, right? Yeah. So I um, had um, just done some research because I didn't know who they were initially until I realized what they had made. So I had already knew who they were for real already. Mm -hmm. so I just put everything together. I was like, oh, wow, this is amazing. And Anna Wise is somebody who I went to school with, and they had gotten some work in with Anna You know Anna Wise? Mm -mm. Okay. Uh, she's uh, on that cartoon, the serial. Uh, and, uh, okay. I've heard her name, but I don't know her, like. Okay, I got you, I got you, I got you, I got you. But we had mutual people, so I just felt like, oh, okay, well, these are homies, blah, 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 you know. Uh -huh. I reach out to them, or they reach out to me saying, hey, what's up, where you at? Come to Cali, we're friends of your work, blah, blah, blah. You know, I hadn't really, like, put out my latest production work. They were just fans of, like, the music, just the melodies, like, you know what I'm saying, just the melodies in general, not even, you know. And so I get out there, and, um... Iman Omari was out there too. Like it was all like a little crew, like you know. So we went out. I was out there, just randomly, kind of just off of just like faith. Like, all right, I'm gonna go, mom. I'm going. I'm about to leave. And she was like, you know, going crazy. I was like, I gotta get out of this house. I gotta go out of this house. <laughs> okay. So I just made the phone call. Like, bro, is it okay? This was like months after he called me and said you're trying to come out there. So I finally said, all right, it's time. Round up, find some kind of way to get some money, mm -hmm. get a ticket, and go out there. This is my first time in California ever. I go out there, and I'm out there vibing with them, doing all type of crazy things, meeting crazy people. Just crazy. I, I, you know, being my first time out there to do all the stuff I did, I, you know what I'm saying? That's yes, like, I know exactly what you're saying. <laughs> so, uh... For that particular track, I was in another room, and the dude, Axel, that's one of the dudes in THC. Axel was in the room playing the kick drum on, on Kyle Green. The kick, just the kick. Huh. So, I guess he threw it away or something, or just put it to the side. And 
I came back in the room and he was playing something else. I was like, no, bring that back, bring that back. I don't know. I didn't really hear anything. I just was, I just liked it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, came over, he brought it back, pulled back the drums, and then I just played all everything else, all the melodies. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Filled in the blanks. Everything just came. It was like, for that particular track, it was weird because you know how sometimes you mess around and then you find it. I didn't have to mess around. I knew exactly. It went immediately. You know what I'm saying? The bass line was the fr- the second thing, like the first thing I laid down. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. That's how it came about. And then I left. I had gone. I got a phone call months later saying, we did it, bro. We did it. I was like, what? what are you talking about? <laughs> he was like, man, they said Schoolboy is, is going to use that beat. One of the beats you made while you were here, dog. Then they said Kendrick hopped on. I was like, no. God. And then, like, a couple months later, they just dropped the song and then dropped the video. I was like, what? You know, it was tight. It was tight. Yeah, that's amazing. It's like, even the feeling you have somebody oh. jump on your beat, you know, like something that you did at the time, you were just feeling it. You were just. You know what I mean? And then, well, yeah, it was a blessing. It was a true blessing. So I was just humbled by the whole experience. That's amazing. Yeah, we're like so proud of you and so happy about everything you're doing. Thank you, man. For real, man. Really? For real. You're an inspiration. Yes. <laughs> well, I just wanted to also tell everybody that's watching if you want to submit a question via Twitter, you can using the hashtag OKPMeetUp. So if you want to ask K Cola or Gwen Bun any questions you want, um, feel free to tweet them to us now. Um, okay, so do you ever, both of you I want to ask, do you ever have um, like a song in mind for an artist that you want to write? K Cola, do you ever like write for other artists specifically, or do you ever like say, you know, I want to write? Beyonce a song or whatever, or do you just make a song and then you find out who it can fit later? Do you not even worry about that? Um, I used to. Um, when I when I started in this game, I started as a writer. Um, I was at the Underdog um, Studio with uh, James Montlevoy and Rob Knox, and um, you know, we I was doing the whole like placement game and everything like that and for me, uh, and this is just for me, it was just it it was it was too stressful. It was um I found myself just creating because I felt like, okay, well they did like five songs today, so I gotta do, you know, six or seven songs and they stayed here all night, so I gotta stay here all night and, you know, just to get a placement and um it like I did, I did music in school too, and I always found that when it was forced, um, it, I started to lose my passion. I just, I didn't want to do it, and I'm like, this is my love, this is my heart. Why am I feeling this way? So that's actually how I started doing my um, artist thing because I just, I, I, it was just too much doing the placement thing. So I say all that to say. Um, Right now, I'm just focused on my album, um, which is coming out uh, like end of February 2015, called Lisa Dreams, and I'm just focused on on that. Um, but in the past, I would, you know, yeah, I definitely, like, I even found myself because when you're doing demos for the artist, you would have to like literally kind of sound like them, to, <laughs> you know, make the make them like the demo and stuff. And I'm like, yo, like, I just want to be me, like. You know, I I don't I don't want to I don't want to try and think how they would think. Like I just want to say it how I feel it, and people will relate to that. You know, because I'm you know I'm a human, and everybody goes through this. So let me just say it how I would say it. Mm-hmm. Stop trying to be somebody else. You know. So I found that to be to touch more people than to just kind of you know try to do whatever everybody else. Is. Yeah. yeah. For sure. So I want to um. I want to ask you all some favorites because I know a lot of your fans 
Okay, player fans probably want to know like what, who your favorites are. So, um, let's see, top three producers of like all time. You could name. Them. You want me to go first? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I go. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> okay. No pressure. Man. Okay. I have to say, just for me personally, I have to say Swiss Beats. Um, I have to say the Neptunes. Neptunes. Yeah. Um. Man. Come on, man. Three, the top three. Y'all can't just, like, come on, man. <laughs> Can we only pick three? Like, what if we have more? <laughs> oh, you want to do five? You can do five. <laughs> right. Okay. I'm going to, um, I don't even know that. <laughs> oh. I really don't know. Um, ah, skip me. <laughs> So maybe maybe think of like somebody you've been listening to lately or you know. I don't know. I've been listening to um, David Bowie. Oh. Oh. Yeah. You could count him. <laughs> I, I mean that's like a dream uh what you call it? Collabo right there. That'd be crazy. That would be crazy. So, so while we're on the subject, Gwen, who would you like if you had to pick two people dead or alive? To work with yeah. um, two people that are alive to work with. Uh, it's so many people, dog. This is ridiculous. So while you think about it, K. Cole, who are your top producers? <laughs> you said my top producers? Uh -huh. Um, okay. For sure the Neptunes. Like, I've been obsessed with Pharrell since I was, like, 14. I was Pharrell one year for Halloween, okay? That's how obsessed I was. I named my bunny Pharrella. I had a bunny rabbit, <laughs> okay? So definitely Neptune. Um, Kanye West, love his stuff. Um, I love Imogen Heap. She's from London, and she will literally use, like, a pipe in her house to, like, and put it on the beat. So you can Have you seen her studio? Um, I've seen, like, YouTube. Okay, videos of it. Yeah, it's yeah. it's amazing. Yes. Um, Ryan Leslie, just because he's so freaking musical and just so talented, he's crazy. Like, mm -hmm. um, who else? Uh, oh, right now I really like DJ Dahi. Um, who else? Do bands count? Because I feel like bands bands make the catch. You know, like Coldplay. They don't really, I don't know if you would say they have necessarily. Counts for what we're doing right now, but I do understand the logic behind why you say it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll just stick to my producer. Yeah, so that would be my that would be my. Uh... Oh, Timbaland. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's a great list. Um, I, I've said a few before, but I always say like Mad Lib, Timbaland. And like Michael McDonald, but those were the people that I said last month. Um, sometimes it changes, but I think that's kind of where I am now too. Um, so as far as like dream collaborations, Gwen, did you think about any? Yeah, I have some. I mean, I always at the end of the day, I always I, I hate to be cliche. I hate it. That's the last thing I want to be. Right. I swear. <laughs> Please don't judge me, okay? I gotta say Michael Jackson. I mean, I, I gotta say yeah. I think that. I feel like Michael Jackson is the greatest entertainer in our generation. It's like you kind of, if you didn't say that, it'd be like, well, why didn't you say Michael Jackson? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so, I don't blame you at all. Do you have anybody else you can think of? Uh, dream collaboration. 
Uh, um, I guess a live. We could say Bootsy Collins. We could say Bootsy. You know what? I bet you, Bootsy, if you're watching this right now, we need Gwen Bun. We need you and Gwen Bun to get together. That would be I'm sure you, you. I'm sure we could find Bootsy. I know. <laughs> Bootsy! <laughs> I will ask. Kay, who do you think? Who's your, like, dream? Two people, if you could pick dead or alive. <laughs> uh, that's for MJ. Um, alive, John Mayer, Pharrell, Kendrick Lamar, and uh, and and Coldplay. That's a great great list. Gwen, do you have any more? Since I said two, with K listed like five, so. <laughs> 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 You can listen as many as you want. <laughs> Fred Hammond, I would do. Oh, that would be amazing. What? That would be amazing. Yeah, it's my heart. Anybody else? Um. Ooh, take six. Whoa, no, no. <laughs> I love the people you name because it's just like I would never guess that, but I understand why. Like I see it. I hear really? it already. I can hear it. Man, you already know. We gotta do something. Where you at? <laughs> I'm in DC. We're gonna we're gonna link up. We, I'm gonna talk to you after this. We're gonna link all three of us. We're gonna link up and do something. Absolutely. Kate all the where you at. <laughs> go. <laughs> yeah, we should all three do something for real. Um, so I want to, because I don't want to take up too much of your time, so maybe we'll do like maybe 10 more minutes. Um, let's see. As a New Year's resolution, what do you want to work on this year and who do you want to work with this year mm. coming up? Does it have to be music? Um, I mean, we talk about music, but if you want to like, you know, start a cooking show and like... Paint, painting you. No, <laughs> no. I want to work with kids. I want to work with the youth, man. Like, I feel like um, there's like a disconnect between like you know the generations, and it's so important that because my biggest fear is like my dad's a jazz musician. My biggest fear is like the art of jazz will be lost, or like you know kids aren't listening to classical music. They're not listening to jazz. They don't know what's up and that's really where all the music comes from so I want to work with kids I want to talk to them you know about where stuff comes from and, and where stuff comes from and just you know make them more aware of some of the things that are going on in the world other than just Instagram and these reality shows you know it's a lot happening right now that you know these kids just need to be fooled on so I definitely want to just follow out of um, and then as far as like 26 videos, of course I want to um, finish up the album and everything like that, but I also, I want to, um, I just want to raise awareness, um, just like even in interviews and um, being at different events, um, not knocking being at the club, but, you know, more over being at the club, I want to be at these protests, I want to be, um, you know, in the community centers, just talking to the community um, about what's going on. Yeah. Stuff like that. That's so important to me. I feel like 2014 was was the year of the awakening, and 2015 used to be like the year of change, the year of the enlightenment and, and the change. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I think it's, it's definitely important that artists like yourself and myself and Gwen um, even just having a conversation like this helps in some way you know like sometimes we feel like we need to do, have these big grand gestures about us you know like we want to change the world but even things like this you yeah. know really raise awareness you know like in a small way so I feel like you are already on that path and you know, I wish you the best of luck with everything. If you need my help, you know, 
Hey. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Quinn, what do you what do you want to do this year coming up? <laughs> this year, I want to finally drop this damn album, man. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I've been I've been taking my time with like the release just because I've been really producing now for real, like building up a catalog, being ready for 2015 production wise. Because you said who I want to work with, I'm trying to right now. I'm um, trying to get in there with Kanye on some like real rap shit. Like I'm really trying to do this. So that um, who else? Um, honestly, them Jigga Man and uh, I mean I don't know, just people like like fabulous stuff like that. Just like the real rap, like. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to do the people who really can rap stuff. So that's my goal for what I want to do. The change I'm trying to do is like just change up my approach all the time. I'm not trying to be the same at all. I want to like always be fresh, be new, and just switch it up, make them think one thing and then do another thing. You know? Yeah. <laughs> You're, you're a really creative person and you can, you know, you're the perfect person to do that. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I support you. I'm excited to hear what you're going to do. Thank you. Both, both you. I'm really happy to have you guys and I'm happy that, you know, we're doing this. Um, can I, also, I get a track? What's up on the track? <laughs> what are you? I tracks for days, okay? <laughs> Whatever you want, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> but um, I want to ask you. <laughs> I want to ask you guys, like, uh, have you had any like obstacles with being a female producer? Is that a thing for you? Is that a big deal? Is it not? Is it a, more of a big deal for other people than it is for you? Um, well, I go. Mm -hmm. It's been. Honestly, I've been so blessed. Like I told y'all, that was the first time I went to Cali and I was around nothing but dudes. You know what I'm saying? Like, when it came to the work, I was around, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. It's, it was easy. It was, it was easy. It's been a plus. It's been a blessing. You know what I'm saying? Like, God has really been showing love. So hopefully, it'll continue to be that way. Yeah. Yeah, I believe that. Okay, what do you think? Has that been, I mean, because you've worked in studio environments with all different types of writers, and, you know, how's it been for you? Yeah, it's so funny you said that, and I, much respect to you uh, for being a producer. That's so dope because, I mean, of course, the stereotype is, you know, that the men are producers, and, you know, um, even recently I, I started producing tracks, and, People were like, nah, you didn't make that. I'm like, what? And I'm like, really? Like, <laughs> what? Because we're female, we can't make. But, um, I mean, there's always those stereotypes, and you just got to let the talent speak for itself and just remain positive, you know? Yep. Talent speak. Yeah, for sure. I completely agree. Um, and if anyone watching this is aspiring to produce, and their girl, is there any advice that you would give them or anything that you could, uh, could lend them? Heck yeah. Stay out of the club unless you're going to do research. <laughs> <laughs> stay, stay practicing. Don't get distracted. Stay focused. Study. Like, study all types of music. You know, learn instruments. Learn as much as you can. That's, and practice all the time. Like, definitely. Gwen, what do you think? Is there anything you could offer to the youngins out here? Uh, definitely. Honestly, Kay, you said the most important thing for real. Like, you really put in the most important stuff. So stay out of the clubs unless you're studying, man. You don't need to be in these clubs. <laughs> nope. <laughs> for real, this is every once in a while. I ain't your thing, man. But, you know. You have to be focused on what you're trying to do because 
it takes a lot of work for it to come easy. It's not going to come this easy. You got to really put in that hard work initially. So you yep. want to you want to wanna try to make a song or write something, you know, it was smart. Your creativity, is, you can't be able to come quicker because you've already been able to tap into your practice. You know how it is to get in that flow. So you put that work in. That's the most important thing. Yeah. And I feel like having practiced myself for so long, like, there's an ease to what I do now where I don't feel like, you know, super nervous about what I do, and I feel like it takes time to get to that. You know, and it's, right. and this is like I know professional musicians right now who still practice, like old musicians who still learning stuff. So, like with music, you'll never learn everything, you'll never hear everything, you'll never play everything, you'll never sing anything. So, it's the kind of thing you can do that your entire life. So, um, I think we picked the, you know, or it picked us. Music picked the right people, or you know, because <laughs> we're not going anywhere. So I just want to thank you guys for joining me. I, I guess I should switch this to my face. I just want to thank you guys for joining me, and um, maybe check Twitter one more time to see if any people want to ask anything. Okay, I don't know if people are adding you or Gwen. Maybe check. And see if people ask me anything. Um, I'm right now. I'm looking. It's been a couple of questions. I've been answering. It's been just like different responses. Yeah. I mean, it looks as if people are just watching and agreeing and being excited about Gwen working with Bootsy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and. <laughs> um. Yeah, I feel like people are just happy to, to watch. However, let me see. Oh, for Gwen, how long did it take you to produce the Verdict album? That's a question. Oh, yeah. Um, I tweeted. Um, it took um, the whole year of 2009. And so with that, where were you? What state of mind were you in? Like, what was, what was going on? Yeah, I was... Um, Still in high school, I was 17, and I was just like, I. Who is this? Who is this? Who is that? Y'all see that person? Who is that? It's Callie. Oh, that's Callie. That's um, she she's the awesome player. <laughs> I see you. I'm like, who is this? Yeah, she. <laughs> Um, I have her muted in the broadcast so people can't see her, but we can see her. You can unmute me. Okay, you good? Okay. Yeah, we food. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. All right. Um. Yeah. Oh yeah. Stay in mind. I was just um in the mindset of all right. I gotta do this. I had stopped playing basketball because that was my like dream for my whole life, and music yeah. was kind of like. I, I was just a big fan, literally, you know what I'm saying? So I took my chance in that year when I was in high school, the last year uh, of high school. And it, it was kind of just like, all right, I'm going to make this music. I wasn't really planning on making the album. It was more of just like, let's just make some music. Mm -hmm. By the end of the year, I had enough music to be, for it to be an album. So, you know, we just put it together and it just all flowed and, you know, did for me. Well, thank you for taking that chance, and thank you for, you know, being okay with not playing basketball enough to make music, because we are so happy that you decided. <laughs> That's my dad. My dad wanted me to be a tennis player, and I'm like, nah, I'm good. Like, <laughs> so how do you, yeah, I wanted to ask you about you and your dad. So, like, growing up watching him play jazz and, like, just, the whole thing, like, how did that, how did that affect you, and how did you feel? Um, you know what is crazy? As I got older, I, I uh, grew to respect it, and like realized, like, like my dad is a genius. Like this is crazy. When I was younger, I was just like, whatever. I'm at Carnegie Hall. Like, 
We're at the New York Philharmonic. I didn't, you know, like, I had no idea running around on this stage with all these opera singers and, like, these, you know, yeah. Stevie Wonder used to come to our house and watch us. well, okay, the, watch the Super Bowl. I know he can't watch the Super Bowl. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I didn't, I didn't, like, I didn't realize what that was. And as I got older, I just have such a respect for it because he taught me, like, the value of work ethic and, like, he still practices two hours a day to this day. And wow. Wow. it just, man, it just shows you, you know, like, he, and I'll, I'll never forget one thing he said to me, like, music is an art, not a sport. And now they try to make it such a competition, and um, it's not it's not supposed to be that, you know? So he just has so many gems and bars that I'm so grateful for that I just, hope that I can share with other people, you know, and share his legacy because it's just that wisdom is, is priceless. So I'm I'm grateful to um yeah. for everybody who doesn't know your dad, his name is Hubert Laws. Please look him up. Amazing musician. I feel like you know it's an honor to even talk about him in a sense like you know what I mean? I just I don't know. I'm very, very <laughs> To people who take this crap seriously. So. Man, he is so serious. If you guys want to get him on here, let me know. <laughs> so, um, let's see. Are there any more questions? Oh, okay, what can we expect from your album coming up? Like, um, I'm just gonna take you through. Through my dream world, like I said, I'm a lucid dreamer, and that's basically just when you're uh, conscious during your dreams and you're aware that you're dreaming and you can, um, you know, kind of manipulate. So I apply that to my life, my real life. Like, to me, this whole thing is a dream. Like, life is just one big dream. You can have the power and achieve what you want to achieve. So um, it, it's pretty much... It's about that and about, you know, love and, and going through the ups and downs of love. I have really dope, I feel so blessed to have dope producers on my album. The guy who's um, he's from the Bay, he did that third single and some other stuff. Um, League of Stars, um, John Famous. Um, and my dad, actually, he's featuring on one of the songs. Mm. Um, and hopefully I'll get Gwen on my, <laughs> Gwen up on the let's talk about it. Let's do it. For real, let's do, do it. it. Now I'm done. Let me do it up. Oh, that'll be so That's awesome. Hell yeah, yeah. All right, we're going to chop it up. We're gonna chop it. Awesome. So, ladies, I just, if there's anything else that um, anyone wants to ask, speak now or you'll never know, ever. <laughs> Questions from my Twitter. Do you have some questions? I do. I have. I have a question um, from. I'm gonna butcher it. I'm sorry. Alea Music, a tech question. What is your checklist when producing? Are there certain industry standards that you check for, or is it more free flowing? Hmm, that's a good one. I didn't hear it. Oh, what is the checklist is, you're uh, producing? Are there certain industry standards that you check for, or is it more free flowing? Like, are you checking for what people are doing technically? Oh, I was like, what? Yeah, you like what's going? On? Yeah, I mean, I understand what you mean. Like, are you checking on what people are doing? outside of yourself, or is it more just like, I feel like whatever I feel like? She's asking specifically about what you use technically. So like, if, okay, say I use machine, are you, do you care that I use machine? Or oh, not? oh, yeah, I don't, yeah, I'm, because I'm, I like to adapt to whatever, so, um, you know, I don't, I don't, I use a particular program, but if somebody uses something else, I'm able to adapt to what they're using. All you gotta do is just record, huh? Are you going to tell them what you use to produce? Say that again. What are you using to produce? Logic. Mm. Are you recording Logic? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, y'all know what y'all use. I use. Uh, for beats, I use Fruit to make um, Pro Tools to record. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. What'd you say? Oh, I use um, everything. I use Pro Tools, Reason, Logic. Whatever, exactly. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you feel me? Let's do it. Yeah. Um, that's what I'm saying. Cool. Well, um, if there are no more questions, I just want to thank you, ladies, because this, I feel like this is like a movement or some something. Oh, there's one more question from me. Um, how did you come up with your eclectic musical style? I didn't even really come up with it. I just am who I am, and I really love people, and I love life. I love culture. I love to travel. I love food, I love movies, I love books, I just love art and culture, so I'm always into different things, and I think it just mirrors itself in my music, um, but I don't do anything on purpose, I'm very like, you know, it's cold today, what sounds like cold, you know, like, I'm, I just do whatever comes. <laughs> yeah. Did we already, I apologize, there's one more. Did we already ask Gwen how long it took to produce the Verdict album yeah, about, and what her favorite people Yeah, we talked about that earlier. I'm getting caught up. Sorry, ladies. No problem, boo. No problem at all. I have a question. What's you guys' sign? <laughs> I'm a Cancer. Gwen, what are you? Virgo. Virgo. Okay, what are you? I'm a Taurus. Yay! I love us. That, is that April? What'd you say? Uh, I'm a May 7th. May 7th Taurus. Uh, right in the middle. That's good. My sister's a cancer, and I love her, though. We just hella get along. Yeah, we get along good. Mm-hmm. What's Callie? What are you, what's your sign? What are you, Callie? I am a cusp of Pisces and Aries. Nice. Mar- March 21st, the day it changes. Oh, wow. So are you on the Pisces side? It depends. In work, I'm an Aries. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> water, earth, work, water. Okay, do we have one more? No worries. You didn't butcher my name. Oh, that's sweet. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. I don't want to hold you guys up anymore. But thank you so much for joining us with... Um, K. Cola and Gwen Bunn on the meetup with Musina. I'm Musina. Thank you, OK Player, for um, getting us involved in your wonderful website. We love you. And that's it. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having us. It's so nice meeting you, beautiful ladies. Yeah, same here. Same here. It's an honor to be here, man. Awesome. I have to say, whenever anyone's in New York, please let us know so we can all actually get together in person. Oh, yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm in New York in January. Oh, perfect. We'll talk. All right. Definitely. Definitely. Okay. Yay. Have a good night, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, everybody. All right. See you. See you. Okay. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.